Hi everyone and thanks for watching this episode of Drawer of the Week. And this week I'm going to show you some specimens of a really common species. Yet they are interesting. Hey everyone and thanks for watching. Here I am holding a drawer that is mainly full of the Tree of Heaven silk moth, the Samia Ricini. And what's interesting about the Samia Ricini is humanity has been breeding them for hundreds of years. I think even going back to 1600. That's about 400 years ago, which is a long time. Why? Well, that's because the cocoons are used for silk production. And this is one of the most famous say, a silk moth used in captivity. The other one is the mulberry silk moth, the Bombyx mori. That one we have been breeding for about 2000 years. That moth is extremely 100% fully domesticated. And this one still has some wild traits because we haven't been breeding it for 2000 years. But about 4000 years. But um, this moth still has very old relationship with humanity and this species only exists in captivity it's a man-made species so um, if you're wondering why I'll, sh I'll explain the details to you right now let's examine the drawer okay now there are several kinds of Samia species in the world in fact there's quite a few of them I don't know all the species from the top of my head but if I had to make an estimation I think there's a good 20 species of them and especially uh, around Asia many of the islands around Indonesia and Malaysia tend to have their own unique endemic species but one of them stands out and this is this one the Samia Ricini now this moth I'm holding here this specimen is a Samia Ricini and the moth that we see here is a domesticated insect. It's a man-made species that we have been breeding for hundreds of years in captivity. Much like a house cat or a dog. In fact this moth here is unable to survive in the wild because um, its biology relies too much on being taken care of by humans. So in the wild they have lost their ability sur to survive. Again much like a dog or house cat Although arguably dogs or house cats can survive in the wild, maybe in a limited fashion. But take something like a cow, for example. Some of them would struggle to survive if it were not for humans taking care of them. And it's exactly like this. And if we look at the DNA of this moth, the Samia Ricini, then you will see it has the DNA of many other Samia species. And the reason is because Samia ricini is actually not a species, it's a hybrid. It's what we call a polyhybrid, which means a polyhybrid is, uh, a regular hybrid is usually a cross between two animals. Now hybrids are usually infertile, but in Samia this is different. Because some crosses of Samia result in fertile moths, which means that you can keep breeding the hybrid. And people have gone as far to breed these hybrids with even third or fourth species. Now, why has this happened? Um, it's probably happened due to ignorance, because people have been breeding this moth for hundreds of years, and hundreds of years ago, people probably did not understand that populations on different islands and different countries are actually different species, because, well, on the surface level, they all look the same. So that's one thing. Um, it's convenient, people cross these moths with uh, local populations of Samia moths to keep the bloodline healthy and strong and prevent inbreeding and cripple adults because of recessive traits. So to keep the bloodline strong, people have been mixing these for hundreds of years, resulting in this unique moth, the Samia ricini. And here we, let's examine some of the wild silk moths. Here we have the wild cousin of the Samia ricini. This is the Samia cynthia. And the Samia cynthia is also bred for silk production. But the Samia cynthia here is still found in the wild. 
So this makes it a wild species. What was interesting is this Samia Cynthia nowadays is almost as popular as the Samia Ricini. People breed both. The main difference is this moth still overwinters in some cases. That means you, uh, if you uh, <coughs> have bad luck, you have to wait for a year for the pupa to hatch when uh, it's spring after winter. And this moth, they stopped overwintering. They're continuously brooded, which is perfect for captivity. One of the adaptations it has to survive as efficiently in captivity and reproduce as fast as possible. Now, um, here we see another moth. This is the Samia Luzonica. Oh no, sorry, the Samia Insularis. And the Samia Insularis is again a wild species. I'm not exactly sure where it's from, but from the top of my head, I believe the, the Samia Insularis, it lives on the Philippines. Uh, the Samia Cynthia, it's also a species from Asia. Uh, although, interestingly, people have stupidly released it all over the world. So you can now also find the Samia Cynthia in Italy, in Australia and North America, sadly. And here we have we are a different one. It's a small one, really co colorful. This is, uh, I believe, this is a Samia Kalinghi. This one is from India. Um, I here have more Luzonicas that I I thought they were from the Philippines, but I could be wrong. So if you are breeding these moths in captivity and you want to know how do you know if my moth is a Samia Ricini or something else, well, the Samia Ricini have one unique trait. And as they have lost all the color on their abdomens. See the white abdomen here? And this is one result of breeding in captivity. Uh, moths often lose their color uh, when you breed them for hundreds of years. And this reason is because the pigments, their color, are useless in captivity if you breed them for silk. In the wild, their colors help to protect them from predators. They help to camouflage them. And... It helps their thermoregulation and other things and helps them blend in with the environment. As I said, camouflage is very important. So birds will not spot a well camouflage moth. But color is useless in captivity because they have no predators, etc. So it's basically a waste of energy to be colorful. And if you look at the mulberry silk moth, the Bombyx mori, the one we breed for almost a few thousand years, it's completely white. It's almost what you would call an albino insect. So these white abdomens, if you want to identify the pure Ritzini, you have this white abdomen, white abdomen, white, white, white. Now if you compare with the Lutzonica, brown abdomen, brown abdomen, brown, or white. So this is a Ritzini, but this drawer is also full of other species. So let's take a look at the Samia Cynthia, brown abdomen, brown, 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 brown. There are some white in there, but majority is still brown again Samia Lutzonica brown abdomen Samia Kaninghi from India so if you buy eggs online of the Samia Ricini and they do not have a white abdomen it means they have been hybridized with a wild silk moth species maybe with the Cynthia this popularly happens because both species are very popular in captivity uh, as reptile food, for example, the caterpillars are great for feeding to lizards and snakes and frogs. Very nutritious and easy to breed. And they're very popular for breeding for silk. They spin great silk cocoons of good quality. But people that commercially breed insects often don't, ironically, they don't understand them very well, their biology. So sometimes they are mixed by accident and the names are mixed up. But yeah. Natural food plants of these moths are, uh, for example, Tree of Heaven. Ailantus, but uh, also Ricinus, uh, I don't know, oh yeah, it's called castor oil plant, the one that's very toxic, that's the one, that's the, one of the natural food plants of the Samia, and also things like sweet gum, etc. So, this was Bart with the Samia, thanks for watching, and until next episode. Hello everyone, and thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. My name is Bart Coppens, and I work with butterflies and moths both dead ones and live ones, because I breed them in captivity. I study them, I film them, I photograph them, I research them, and I volunteer in a museum collection where I'm a conservator of the butterflies and moths. 
Now Drawer of the Week is my weekly series where I show you one drawer with interesting specimens from a museum and give you some interesting facts about them. If you like it, like my video, subscribe to my channel and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Because only with your help, my mission to educate the whole world about insects can be fulfilled. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next episode of this weekly series.